morning. Welcome to Winnipeg. Yes. I got the camera facing the bird feeder. I'm going to keep an eye on the bird feeder all day today. See if we get any birds frequenting the uh, my handiwork yesterday, unplugging the seeds. Uh, yeah. Uh, earlier this morning it was on uh, on the bridges. And when Don and Bridget came, came over, uh, it, it was uh, uh, so foggy, I could just barely make them out. And it was kind of, kind of snowing too, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I was hoping to be able to easily get out with the car tomorrow, but maybe it's going to be going to take a little bit of shoveling. <laughs> well, that's, that's all right. It won't kill me. No. I did come back to the model table last night. We do have a tiny little rollback. Uh, I did do some painting, although I did not video any of the actual painting. We did enough of that for a while. Uh, oh, yeah, I painted this. That gets explained in, in the rollback. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, I don't have a whole lot to, to say here. Uh, oh, uh, did you notice that the muffins have their own theme song? <laughs> yeah, Arlene's muffin has, a, has its own theme song now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that, that was kind of appropriate too. The Muffin Man. Okay, now, uh, I don't know, you know, my problem is if I take a bite of this now, I'm not going to be able to stop, and I want to kind of save it for like mid-morning, so I'm just going to stick it back over here under the camera. <laughs> Mind you, I can still see it. <laughs> okay, uh, let's uh, let's get our macro lens on, and uh, and take a look at this. And uh, but I think first we better watch the rollback so you know what it's all about. So let's roll back. Okay, here's what's happened. We're going to do two tests this evening. If you watch the end of the last episode, you'll hear me complaining to myself a little bit about the fact that I'd forgotten to clean this brush out. Well, it's probably about five, six hours now since I... because I sort of forgot about it again. And I had said that I was going to try Windex and see if Windex will have the same effect on this Mr. Hobby paint as it does on the Tamiya XF paint. So those of you who have watched a lot of my episodes, you'll, you'll know that I've used the Windex on the XF paint with great success. And uh, we're just gonna... I suppose there's probably another way I could do this, but... If, I, if I'm careful here, I shouldn't make too big of a mess. Okay, now this, this is going to be the first test. Okay, so here we go. No, it, it's, it's dissolving it. It's dissolving it. Not as fast, but it is, it is going to, we are going to get our paintbrush back. So that that's good. That, that's good. I was I was afraid that it wouldn't because this uh, Mr. Hobby paint seems to be a little bit uh, well, for lack of a better expression, better quality than the Tamiya. It just seems that way. Uh, in other words, it seems to stick to stuff better. I got a comment from uh, Jeff Donahue and. He was wondering how well will it stick to photo etch. So that's what that photo etch there on the left is all about. It's a piece of scrap photo etch left over from the hood build. Anyway, I was mentioning to Jeff that I had got some of this paint on one of my tweezers here this afternoon. I guess it would be this morning. Anyway, I didn't notice that it was on there. And when I went to it, had dried on there. And I was, I was really surprised at how well the... Uh, uh, the uh, paint, this uh, Mr. Hobby paint stuck to the metal tweezer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
Okay, so th this this works. All right, uh, we, we don't need to mess with this anymore. I'm just going to press stop here and, and recompose. Okay, so what I've got going on here is some isopropyl, 99% on this cotton bud here. I'm just going to hold this down so that it doesn't catch and slide around. But I want to I want to make sure that I've I've cleaned this off really good because undoubtedly this has been handled a lot by the corners, and there will uh, undoubtedly be a lot of grease on it from my fingers. So we're just going to make sure we get this, you know, more or less pristine here. I don't think there's any anything on there now, or at least there'll be very little. It'll be probably better than a lot of the photo etch that we painted in the past. Except maybe what the photo etch that I stuck in the in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Okay, now I'm using the, the dry end here just to get rid of the excess residue. Okay, we'll let that dry for a minute or two. I'll just raise it up off of the green cloth and then we'll put some uh, Mr. Hobby paint on it and we'll let it sit overnight and see see how it looks in the morning. Uh, I'm hoping this is sort of what you had in mind, Jeff. Okay, I'm just using a self-locking tweezer here to hold it up off of the cloth. So that when I press on it with a brush, it's not going to go down. And we'll use the brush that we cleaned up. And I don't think we're going to need very much, are we? It, I suppose it would be probably better if I was to spray it. Okay, let's let's just leave that on. That's sort of a medium layer. It's not really thin and it's not really thick. You can see the little bubbles on it. At least I can. Okay, maybe I should have had the macro lens on. Yeah, I'm, I think I dropped the ball there. I should have had the macro lens on, but but you can see it. We'll use the macro lens tomorrow morning when we try and scrape it off. So I'm noticing that our camera number 16 is still looking at the bird feeder. I better get it swung around for the sunrise for tomorrow morning. I wonder if any birds actually came to the bird feeder. I did set the the motion so that I can actually quickly check. Maybe I'll do that later this evening. Now speaking of this evening, when I came to the model table here oh, about half an hour ago, I guess, and started messing around with the paint, uh, I was feeling kind of tired and I thought to myself, you know, I, I think this is all I'm going to do and then I'm going to call it a night. But, but right now I'm feeling a little bit more, my mojo kind of came back a little bit and I think I'm going to sit here for a while maybe and get the flashing off of some of these parts. Now, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get more mojo and actually paint them. If I do, I'll paint them the uh, darker uh, shade of gray again so that they will contrast because most, most of these parts, they go on here and also on, on this piece here. So... Even though it may not it may not be uh, you know correct you know uh, if you're a rivet counter and want to have it correct it, it won't be <laughs> but at least it'll show up uh, yeah so uh, I think that's what I'm going to do here this evening is I'm just going to go ahead and do that I probably won't be doing any more videoing so uh, all been well we're going to see you in the morning. Maybe I better wear my other glasses. I don't want to be nipping off something that I <laughs> I'm going to need. There, that's a start. See you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. And last night I got a message from Ed and he says that his wife Carol made the cake from my recipe. Well, I'll let you listen to it. Ron, I thought I would show you, give you a video of the cake that your recipe, Carol made it. It's, it's cooling out in, my, out in my workshop, but this just came out of the bunt pan and it's uh, chilling out waiting for Christmas. Carl and I both appreciate your posting that recipe. 
It looks delicious. Now there's only one thing wrong with this cake. It looks a whole lot better than mine. <laughs> you know, I wonder if there's such a thing as a silicone bunt pan. <laughs> Uh, I'll look into that. <laughs> I think I do have a bunt pan, but it's the old metal kind. <laughs> They're hard to clean. <laughs> I'm lazy. Anyway, thank you, Ed, and thank you, Carol. Okay, enough about food already. Mind you, it is pizza day. Anyway, I think it's time that we slip on our macro lens and have a nice close look. I'm noticing that I can slightly see the brass, the photo etch, through the paint now that it's dried. If you remember, I didn't put it on real, real thick. Um, I think normally a person, if you were worried about, you know, seeing the photo etch and not have it thick enough, you'd put it on thicker to start with, or you'd probably do a second coat. Anyway, let's just take our... Uh, our hobby knife here and uh, uh, I don't want to press too hard because you can scratch anything off with a sharp blade like this now what what do I think about and does it seem to be on there better or worse and let's, let's try something like uh, like my fingernail here. Mm. Well, uh, what do I think? Let's try the back of the hobby knife. Mind you, it's sharp as well. I don't know if this is sticking any better or not. Maybe, maybe a little bit better, because I can't scratch it off with my nail. Mind you, my nail is fairly soft, right? Um, anyway, uh, Jeff, what do I think? I think it is probably a little bit better on Photo Etch than the uh, Tamiya XF. Um, but I could be wrong. It could be a lot better, or maybe it's just the same. I don't know what other way I can test this. Okay, it, it, it sticks, and that's the main thing. It sticks uh, good enough that you can't scratch it off with your fingernail. Now, as long as we have the macro lens on, these are the G5s. And I couldn't uh, find a place to grab onto them. Uh, they, uh, for, for instance, this part right here on the end, that is not a positioning pin. That is actually supposed to be uh, visible. It doesn't plug into anything. The only thing that plugs into anything, you'll see later when we actually go to do it, is the parts that are being, uh, that, that the uh, tweezer is holding on to here. Um, on, on this one, you can actually see it fairly good here. Uh, that, that that's the only thing that that actually goes into a uh, into you might say a, a positioning hole. Okay, and now there were some other parts here. There's spe especially one I want to show you that's really confusing. I think the best way to show that is is place it on the manual, and you'll be able to see uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, this is one of those cases where. Trumpeter, I think, probably could have done a little bit of a better job in, in with their manual. And I'm just going to twist this off here. I just glued it on because this is the back side, which is going to go up against the, our uh, torpedo tube. Now, oh, I'm having trouble turning this over here. Okay. Now, if we get this part, our G7, uh, in, in uh, orientation to the drawing, it, it's like this. However, if we turn it over on the other side, you'll notice where the tweezer is holding on here. Oh. 
okay where the tweezers holding on there there's a little hole right there and uh, what why would there be a hole there if we're gonna have to mount this like this because it, it clearly shows you know like this and we I can't really put it on the other way because of where this where this slot is out here at the end if I if I flip it around 180 degrees then it, it bangs into the hinge on, on the uh, so it, it has to go like it has to go like this and uh, well it's pretty hard to do on camera but you can see um, yeah why would that little hole be there I mean is it a case of you know that, that, that it, it, it is supposed to go on like this somehow although Yeah, is, is it supposed to go in like this? And uh, it's, it's just not clear. It's, it's confusing, in other words. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to hope that I'm that I'm doing it right, and I'm going to be uh, you know putting it on the way the manual says. In other words, like this. Um, let's see if I can get it on there. I just got to I got to reposition here a little bit here. Sorry to be getting everything in your way. I guess I can always, uh, I can always dub out the, uh, nonsense, can't I? Okay, now that should just fit right in there. Okay, now, this is, this is, uh, mounted at where it's supposed to go. Uh, anyway. And, uh, one more piece here. Let's just get with the, get this off here. I guess I could leave it on, that's all right. Okay, now th this part right here, uh, just break it off. I, I glued it on. Oh my, it really glued on hard, didn't it? I might have to take an, and uh, a sanding disc to that so that it'll fit down. But but this is supposed to go. Um, this part. here here here's another another thing that's not too clear if you look at it okay it's supposed to go like this and then it's supposed to go like like this maybe yeah it's it sort of sort of fits it sort of fits but but not real good. Trumpeter, trumpeter, trumpeter. I think I can I can sort of get it in there. I'm trying to watch the monitor with uh, with one eye here so that I can see what you're seeing. Otherwise, half the time I'm going to be doing it off camera and not realize it. I I think it's supposed to go like that. The only thing I can say is, yeah, these parts do not mesh up well, do they? Um, okay, think about it, I guess. Okay, now I only need this uh, this part here sticking out. Just so I can brush it. Okay, you get the idea. I think I'm going to flood it on just a little bit better. It does shrink wrap really well. Now, now the 
pointy part of this uh, of the in other words the end of this this little tube it does go up against a positioning hole a little bit more than I needed. I think I've said that before a few times. Okay now this this will this will shrink. I'm gonna just give this first one just a little bit more here just I think I may not have got all of it. It's hard to tell once again you can see it a lot better than I can. I've said that before too. Okay, we'll let that dry and uh, and it is what it is. Now here's something I don't think we have done in this build before. And that is we put a person who is supposed to be to scale, like this is supposed to be a 148 scale of me. And notice the motorcycle slippers. <laughs> yeah. Gabe uh, made this and uh, brought it over when he was here the last time. I, I had meant to show you, he actually made three three things. Maybe I should um, recompose here and show them to you because they're kind of interesting. Anyway, this is supposed to be me <laughs> with my captain's hat on, uh, inspecting the, uh, well in this case the torpedoes. But this gives you an idea of scale. You, When you see a man standing beside these torpedoes, you realize just how how big they actually were. Uh, we'll have to do this a lot more often when, during this build. Now, when we get to the end of the build, of course, we'll be making, what is it, 46 or 48 of, of figures to this scale? and putting them in different places in the in the ship at least that's that's the plan and uh <laughs> yeah so uh i guess i shouldn't hold myself by my hat should i that balance is pretty good whoops <laughs> motorcycle slippers honestly <laughs> okay this one you just saw and this one is the same thing only it's got a a little base and it looks like a toolbox and Gabe said he did his best to make it look like a Honda Rebel <laughs> Okay, I just thought I'd better show you that. I've had uh, at least two comments about this part right here. And uh, the first one was quite a while ago. Somebody suggested that maybe I hold off uh, before I put this on. The second one I think came through yesterday. Somebody was wondering if maybe I'd forgotten about it. And the idea was, I think, can I? Is it possible to get it in place now? This is the first time I'm trying it. Uh, I'm just doing sort of a dry fit here before I put the glue in. But you can see there's a it's supposed to go into that slot there. Oh yeah, that's that's going to be all right. It seems to kind of line itself up. Obviously, this this end here is supposed to match up with something. Okay, let's let's just. Uh, I've already got that in there. I think I'm going to use the. Uh, should I maybe use extra thin? I think I'll, I think I'll use the extra thin, and it'll have sort of a melding effect. And uh, let's try not to get it anywhere except in that slot. I'll just fill that in. 
that, that'll be lots. Okay, now. Yeah, you can see it's starting to ooze out there. That's going to make a, a real tight bond once that evaporates. Okay, let's uh, leave that alone for a while. Okay, here's what's happened. When I was manipulating around with this thing a few minutes ago, just trying to press it down, I was picking this up in my hand and the torpedoes have come, torpedoes have come loose off of the tray here. And so I thought, well, that might be a blessing in disguise. Obviously, they weren't on very hard because I didn't put much stress on it. So I was thinking, you know, now now we can sort of check and see how is this going to come in relation to this this bulkhead that goes on. And so the, this bulkhead actually goes like this. Um, could be my my foam block is just slightly too long here. Uh, but anyway, this is going to fit in like this. According to step, I think it's number 14. Anyway, but, but what I'm getting at is now we can check to see what is going to... How far back can these torpedoes go? Uh, I, I would think that they're supposed to be probably within... I'm guessing maybe uh, a cent... No, less than half a centimeter, probably about five millimeters from from the end of the uh, travel there. Let's see if I can get this to fit in there properly. I, I want to be careful that I, I don't uh, loosen this because this is is, is uh, drying quite nicely here. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. Okay, okay this goes in Like this, yeah, that's that's gonna fit. Oh yeah, that's gonna fit okay. I think. It doesn't seem to be. Doesn't seem to be fitting too good right here where my finger is. Why is that? Oh, I see why. I see why. There's a. Uh, flashing right there. I missed that. I got I got the other ones, but I missed that one. Okay, I'll we'll I'm going to get that right now actually and then we'll try it again. Hey. This might be a real good time to try out these chisels. I think probably the the larger one would be good. I'll put the macro lens back on. Yeah, I think the, I think this one right here would be the best one. Yeah, it should it should be nice and sharp. Don't hurt yourself now, Ron. Okay, we'll get the macro lens on and see if we can chisel that off. You know what, I think I'm going to end up pushing it away from myself here. I better uh, try and hold it down with something here. This might work. This is the first time I'm using one of these. I keep forgetting about them. Maybe the one with the... I'm just trying to get it in my my hands just right here. Now, I do not want to dull the chisel on the on that hard steel of the... There we go, now I can press. Okay. Um...
just for the fun of it, I'm going to get the other one. The other one has more of a blunt. It's a lot smaller, but it's a little bit more, a little bit more blunt here. I might be able to get that. And I know I'm. I don't need to do it this good, but I, I want to try these things out. So, just bear with me. Okay, it's always nice to be able to cut out the dead spots. Oh yeah, I can see where something like this could be very useful in in a place where there you had flashing in sort of a, an area that you know how sometimes they they put the flashing in the wrong place. All right, I, I don't think there's uh, we need to do any more here. I could just take a sanding disc now and just run it over that. Where's my sanding disc? Did I say disc? I meant stick. Okay, I, I think that's probably about as flush as we need to get it here. Okay, let's let's try our parts together now. Okay, so here's what's happened. I know, this is not pizza, but for the last two weeks, I have been pigging out on stuff like pizza and that kind of stuff. And uh, tomorrow I'm supposed to be going out for Christmas dinner. And um, I, uh, I've got to take it easy today, otherwise I'm not going to be able to really enjoy myself tomorrow. And yet, what's the difference, right? I've been picking out for two weeks with one more day, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be good today. So uh, this is as close to pizza as we're gonna get. Mm. Well, thank you, Arlene. You helped to make my pizza day. Now we were gonna try this out. Where's the other piece? Here we go. And this should fit a little better now. I, I, th I think I should be able to do it like this. Look at that. Okay, now the torpedoes Careful now, don't break my four little uh, things that I painted. Okay, they're glued together quite good this way, you know, like in the, in the seams here. Uh, but I was wondering, do I really need to glue them down? I, I suppose if the if they weren't glued down and this was just sort of rattling around in there, it's possible that, um, I, I, th I think they're always, I think a person's always able to get at them though. So, okay, there's another plot, the, the, the deck mounts, mounts on right here. And, uh, I think it pretty much, oh yeah, it'll, it'll, the bottom of the deck should clear the top of the torpedoes. But maybe we won't glue these down. Maybe maybe we'll just put them in place. And, uh, I mean, uh, you know, if, if these things rattled around and got out of place, I think a person can get your fingers in from the side, and, uh, well, I guess it, it would be from this side, and, and move them and straighten them out. Um, okay, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get to it. It won't be for quite a while. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, 
in the uh, manual here. Um, yeah, just let me recompose here. Okay, I know we're in step 5, but I've paged ahead to step 10 here because I wanted to see how do these tubes look when they're all in relationship to each other the way they're supposed to go. And this one right here is actually is A. And it goes on the bottom. And when we realize that it goes on the bottom like that, then then a person can see that how how this part is supposed to go. Okay, it's, it's supposed to go something like this. And uh, then B would go on the other side, but on, on the top of it here we would have we would have C, tube C. Uh, okay, so now now I know that that this part that I just <laughs> slipped off on me uh, is it, supposed to go. Okay, it's supposed to go on the top of the tube, not the tube on top of the part, because because it actually could be made to fit that way, sort of. <laughs> um, okay. We do have some little pieces that, that have to go on this tube right here, like this piece that... Did I glue that on? Yeah, I did. No, I didn't. Yeah, I think I did. I can't remember. It's it's stuck on there anyway. Oh no, I didn't. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, let's let's glue it on. And uh, and also uh, the part that goes across the top, and then that that one one of uh, these little guys that we just just painted up here. I think I think I should build a handle. I'm trying to pull it out here. Okay, yeah, it goes it goes on something like. Uh, Maybe I should have the macro lens on for this. It it goes on. Uh, I can't pick it up. You can see that little that little dimple right there. It's, it's got to go on something like that. But yeah, I wonder how I'm going to glue that on so that it doesn't make a mess, you know, and have the 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 dark the dark paint bl uh, bl uh, bleed into the light paint and vice versa. Um, I wonder if I should use some uh, PVA glue instead of, um, I have to think about this. Okay, I've paged a way ahead and right up to 17 here, which is the very last step in the forward torpedo room module. When we get to here, we'll be putting together absolutely everything and we will be then moving back a module and doing another module. Okay, um, what, what I was going to do was I was going to I was going to glue this in place and then I was looking at the uh, the diagram and it appeared to me that there is nothing that goes in in this slot. Okay, so let me zoom in a bit here. Okay, I'm going to use Chris's file here as a pointer. Okay, this this slot that I've got the the uh, file in is actually this slot right here. There is nothing in there. Uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I I didn't. In other words, what I'm saying is the reason I did not paint it is is because I I thought that something was going to go in there, and I thought, well, what, why paint it? So um, now this is not a serious mistake. I can quite easily paint this, but I, it's sort of a uh, okay, quit poking and let's move on here. I can hear Misty barking out there. I don't know 
why she's uh, barking at my door. She was just here about 10 minutes ago. I guess she uh, figures if it worked 10 minutes ago, it, it'll work again. Okay. I think that's going to stay on this time. So I got my lid back on the jar and then I realized I hadn't done the other three. Well, it's a good thing the lid can come off again, right? Okay. This is uh, isopropyl. I've been using this since the Bismarck. Works good. I'll bet you there's a, about a, a centimeter of sludge in the bottom of it. Okay. I better go check and see how much footage we got going on here. Well, as it turned out, we got a lot of footage going on. <laughs> it's taken me quite a while to get everything all sorted out. We don't have time to check the birds or nothing. And there's no sunrise, so I don't need to worry about that. Anyway, it's Christmas Eve here in Winnipeg. And a few other places. Uh, yeah, tomorrow Christmas Day, I've got commitments, so, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning all day well, but, uh, it's probably going to be pretty short. Uh, yeah, so I, I gotta, I gotta call her quits here. Thanks for watching, everybody, and all day well, we'll see you on Christmas Day.